Hello, my name is Lauren Stokes. Previously, I gave you a sneak peek at an amazing X3D project designed by students of the 3D web for Architecture for Humanity. And today I am sitting here with Cameron Sinclair, TED Prize winner and co-founder of Architecture for Humanity. And he is here to tell us a little bit more about the organization and uh, exciting new project that you just recently launched. So welcome, Cameron. Thank you, Laura. Of course, of course. Um, so tell me more about the mission of Architecture for Humanity. Um, the organization itself is to allow architects, designers, anybody who's kind of interested in improving the built environment to get involved in humanitarian issues. Uh, we also provide professional services to communities in need. So that can range from in a post-disaster situation, helping communities rebuild, or tackling a systemic issue of poverty, whether it's access to health care or education, or even the basics of water and shelter. Great, great. Well, so what is the Open Architecture Network? Uh, the network was founded about two years ago when we won the TED Prize. And the idea was, um, if our focus is to create architectural innovation for social good, the only way that we're going to kind of create scale is by sharing it openly. Kind of the idea of taking something like Creative Commons as a licensing system, applying it to the built world, and allowing people to come up with innovations which they can then distribute you know, to, to tackle these gray issues. Um, the network itself has grown rapidly. There's now around 2,400 projects on that. Wow. Uh, now you bear in mind, two years ago there was only one building with a Creative Commons license, so that's a, a real rapid scaling. Uh, and there's about 15,000 members, and they range everything from your kind of stodgy planner to kind of your kind of young 3D visualization experts. So sure. it's, it's all the stakeholders of the built environment. That's great. That's great. Well, can you tell me about your latest design challenge? Yeah, every two years on the network, we host a design competition. And for us, if we really want to tackle an issue, in this case, education, it's important to have all the stakeholders involved. So for us, what a stakeholder is, is the person who utilizes the building, the person who designs the building, the person who maintains the building. And the Open Architecture Challenge this year is classrooms. Uh, and for us, the experts are the teachers, the students, uh, and the designers who, who help design it. So we're asking them to come together and to design the classroom of the future. Um, what makes this challenge very different from most design competitions is that not only are we asking people to share their solutions openly using Creative Commons as a mechanism, but rather than focusing on, say, a school in the middle of Vermont and having all these designers design that school, we're asking designers and students and teachers to design their own school and to go into their own neighborhoods and try and come up with the most sustainable, safe, and uh, innovative environment for them. That's great. That's yeah. great. How can um, students of architecture, of 3D design, of the 3D web help promote uh, green sustainable design? You know, um, we're it. I mean, when you're talking about sustainability, it's infused in uh, training. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody who's involved in architecture right now, anyone who's involved in the 3D web, you know, we're not just thinking about creating spaces, but we're trying to create them efficiently, more sustainably. And, you know, most people in positions of power don't know how to visualize the future. They can't think of what a green world will look like. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us. We have that, not only a responsibility, but an opportunity to show what will the world look like in 20 years, 40 years, 60 years. So even with the kind of open architecture challenge that we're launching this year, we're not just looking for a cool classroom. Mm -hmm. We're looking for one that kids in the next 20, 40 years will not, not, not only enjoy, but it, they'll be the most sustainable and environmentally sound environments for them to learn. So it's, you know, all the students who are listening or watching, you know, it's, it's vital for you to participate because you're the ones who are going to lead this kind of revolution. So, you know, get online, get involved, and, uh, you know, if there's a project you want to get involved in, you know, that you're working on, well, come to us because we love building innovative, exciting stuff. So it's all about collaborating because that's the only way we're going to get stuff done. Um, you know, recently you were announced as one of the young global leaders and were invited to the World Economic Forum in Davos. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about a memorable uh, moment you had there? Um, it was, a, it was a, a series of memorable moments. You have to remember that in you know, 2009, this was the year of the economic meltdown. 
And when you're invited to the World Economic Forum, you know, you would imagine that everything is really glum. But what happened was on the first day, all the people that were supposed to be the great leaders of the financial world threw their hands up and said, we don't know what's going on. Which, you know, by the second day that led to a lot of anger, saying, well, what do you mean you don't have a solution? And by the third day, it's almost as if they left the gates of power open. And anybody with an idea, anybody with, who was passionate about supporting the needs of others, basically stormed the gates. And, and so there was a whole group of us who really care about uh, the future of the world, not just financially but environmentally, that basically took over panels, you know, basically took on world leaders, you know, basically pinned them in a corridor and started kind of saying, listen, why aren't you doing this? And, and so actually for me it was a lot of fun because, you know, I was one of those kind of disruptive, disruptor agitators. Sure. Um, I think if you were working for a bank, you were probably in the corner weeping. But, you know, <laughs> so it was kind of fun to be in my position. So it was a lot of memorable moments, um, ranging from sitting down with the former finance minister of, of Afghanistan to sitting down with the vice president of Zimbabwe and asking about how to rebuild their country in a kind of post-Mugabe world and what mm -hmm. that would look like. I mean, it's kind of exciting. Uh, opportunities. So um, I think what's amazing is that someone in their 30s has the opportunity to, you know, sit down with a world leader and, you know, really kind of quiz them on what they, they think about the future. Right. Will the real revolution begin, Sam? Yeah, and it's going to happen not through the kind of elder statesman, it's going to happen through us. I mean, all of us who are in our 20s and 30s who, who grew up with a kind of techno technology-based world, we know how to utilize it, we know how to change to it. And we're much more agile in the way that we, we lead. And so in this kind of complex world where we have all these range of issues, the only people who have the skills to do this are the tech-savvy, passionate communities. And that's us. So, you know, if, if you care about the world, don't just sit on your butt, just take over. Rock on. Well, Cameron, it's been such a pleasure. Lovely to uh, see you again, yes. and uh, you're always welcome. Uh, both in the physical office and the, and the virtual <laughs> one, too. So. Thank you so much again, and thank you to the students and sponsors um, who are helping support this great organization's message in the Web3. Thanks.